I'm in the churchyard at Buckfast Lee in the county of Devon in the UK, in the southwest of the UK. The church here is now derelict as a result of a fire uh, a number of years ago. And like so many of these churchyards, there is a memorial to those soldiers that died in the two great wars. On this side there are 25 names. Two from the Beer family, two from the Bickle family. Over here we have another 25 names from those that died in the first war. I see there are two from the family of Thule here. And on the fourth side we have a list of those that gave their lives in the Second World War. And there's about 30 there. So we have 50 names from the First World War and around 30 from the Second. And Buckfast Lee is not a large area, not a large town. It must have been a tremendous sacrifice. One of the larger memorials here in the churchyard to Hampton, William Hampton. And various members of his family are on the other sides of this memorial. This one's uh, surrounded by these iron railings and the large stone tomb in the center to members of the Callard family. There are other tombs here with railings also. This one here says William Richard Coulton and one here where it's quite impossible to get the names off the stone. This one is to Harriet Lee, the wife of George Lee. She died in 1899 and he followed in 1916, aged 96. In loving memory of Robert J. Pierce, 1906, aged 35. And of Polly, his wife, who died in 25, 1925, aged 56. This one has an uncommon surname, Mary Ann Honeywill, 1899, age 36, and her parents, Richard and Jane Honeywell. Another rare surname here, Polly Elizabeth, the wife of Thomas Luckraft. She died in 1883. And further down we have Thomas Luckraft. Mary, brackets Polly, it seems to be a very popular name here, Polly, the wife of Arthur Dalton Cornwall, 1914, age 45. We're just in the adjourning county of Cornwall, we're in Devon here, but the next county west is Cornwall, so his surname is from the county. I'm not sure I've ever seen this surname before. Bun Clark, William Bun Clark, and his wife Mary. Some nice uh, carving at the top of the stone there. This one to Richard Head of Scoriton, beloved husband of Alice Head. This one's Theresa. The wife of George Pepperell, 
1918. A different style on this one. William Coombs, 1906. The orange lichen has taken a grip on this one, giving it a very uh, artistic appearance. This is James Warren and his wife Elizabeth. Some very nice carving on this one. Charlie, Charlie Windsor, who died at Liscard Hospital. It's actually to Mary, the wife of Charlie Windsor. And the carving at the top here, Very carefully done. One here, the inscription at the base. Reginald de Burgu Wise, son of the late Charles William Wise of Rochestown, the county of Tipperary in Ireland. A smaller stone here in this rather interesting orange marble and this is a memory of John Chaff 1897 and Lily his wife. A little unusual here in that it just gives the initials CML Row 1873 to 1886 so just 13 years old clear to read in the sunlight in loving memory of George Sandy, 1890, aged 52 years, and his wife Annie Sandy Maria Tucker, 1869. And behind is this one here to Charlotte Sleep, the beloved wife of S. Sleep, but further down we find a memorial to Simon Sleep. This one is to Jane, the wife of S. James Searle, and down below we see the name is Samuel James Searle, but the engraving up here is interesting. Looks like an angel holding an open book. The churchyard here is situated uh, high on a hill, uh, a long, long flight of steps if you walk up from the town. You can drive up through the narrow lanes. And here we're looking across at the Dartmoor Hills. And down there in the valley is the Abbey of Buckfast. There's a Another quite unusual name here, Redvers James Gean. And underneath, in loving memory of Hubert John Gean. And it mentions that he was the Corps 15th Service Battalion Rifle Brigade, brother of the above, killed at Passchendaele, 1917. I hope you can read that with the shadow falling across it. Hubert John Gean was just 29 years. A group of stones here, all with the surname of Gilpin. This particular one is Anne Gilpin, 1894, age 67. Words on this one read, here is deposited the earthly tabernacle of Elizabeth Soper, wife of Walter Soper, which was dissolved October the 10th, 1810. And as this graveyard has a lot of less common names, I have to include this one. Part of the way down we have Bernard Treblecock. Again, it's a surname I've not come across before. We have a war grave here to Private G. A. Reardon of the Worcestershire Regiment. 
and he was just 19 when he died in 1919. This war memorial is to Air Craftsman First Class A.R. Boone of the Royal Air Force, aged 25 when he died in 1941. This one is to A.C. Smale Steward on HMS Cyprus, 20th of January 1943, aged 29. And at the foot of the stone we have the additional words which the family would have paid to put on. His twin, Headley Norman Steward, lost on HMS Squire, aged 31 in 1945. This is to Private J. Burge, Devonshire Regiment, 1919, aged 31. This is a larger stone than normal for a war grave, but it's to Robert K.G. Graves, captain in the Royal Army Medical Corps, who died 1920, aged 42. I've not seen a war grave stone that large before. This one is to five members of the Abbott family. At the top we commence with John Hoare Abbott, who died in 1888, aged 63. And then as we go down, we've got Alice, Richard, Robert, and Mary. Further down the graveyard, we have a much newer section. Quite a number of graves have flowers on. And at the far end there looks to be space uh, for additional burials. This one is Ronald Rogers, beloved husband of Mildred. But right alongside it is this little memorial. Can't read the inscription for the junior child's grave. And the lichen has really been attracted to this stone and has made a spectacular job with its orange and white colours. And likewise for this one behind, really adds some character and atmosphere to the graveyard. This is a very solid lump of stone, granite, and the family name is Weatherdon. At the top you can see Thomas Weatherdon, John Weatherdon, and various other names as we work our way down. This chap sounds like a character from one of Charles Dickens' novels, Silas Jenkin. Died in 1888, aged 44. Something a little original here, although it's now difficult to read. It's been inscribed in a circle, the top you can read in memory of, and then we can uh, see names Frederick, Harriet, or something similar, and uh, in ever-decreasing circles. It would be interesting to have seen that uh, when it was originally carved. Well, there's a lot to see here. And it's in a beautiful situation on top of the hills, uh, views in most directions. The derelict church is adding a lot of character to the situation. There are a lot of memorials. I can thoroughly recommend uh, coming here. You're probably better off to drive all the way up to the church. There is a flight of steps up from the village. I believe it's several hundred. But I found a problem in parking in the village, as much as I'd like to have walked up. So use your sat-nav or your map and drive up here. It really is a beautiful spot. Till the next time.